Now today we're looking at this guy right here. This is an air fuel sensor specifically for trouble code P0133, 134, and 135. Ultimately it's for the sensor located at bank 1 sensor 1 and I'll explain what that means in a moment. So we'll go over the steps on how to find the sensor specifically on your vehicle. We'll remove it and I'll also show two different techniques on how to test them. Now the sensor we're dealing with today is located at bank 1 sensor 1. Now what does that mean? Bank 1 means the passenger side of the engine. Now in this case this happens to be a transverse mounted engine. In other words it's mounted sideways in the vehicle. So it can be a little daunting but nonetheless quite simple. Bank 1 is the rear side or toward the firewall. Okay that's the passenger side of the engine. Bank two would be the driver's side, which is toward the radiator. So as you can see, we have an air fuel sensor right there. This is bank two, which we just, just did last week. Today we're doing bank one back here. That's it, that's all it means. Sensor one meets before the catalytic converter. So right there is the catalytic converter. So this is bank two sensor one. Today we're doing bank one sensor one. So as you can see, we have a number of plastic panels in the way, so we need to clear this out of the way and we'll have much better access to obtaining that sensor. Now these just simply unclip from its mounting place. Quite simple. Just be gentle with these because they can break in this case, uh, these are 13 years old. Come back here, have these tabs, just pull up. Okay. Now a couple of tips on how to find the sensor specifically on your vehicle. Number one is try a Google image search. Many times you can quickly find where the sensor lives on your vehicle. Number two is visit a forum that deals specifically with your vehicle. Option three is purchase a repair manual specific for your vehicle. But in this case, you can sort of figure it out rather quickly. Don't forget, we're dealing with a sensor that is attached to the exhaust. So here we have the front exhaust, and now we're looking for the rear exhaust, or bank one. And I know it's tight in here, but right there, right there is where the sensor is located. Now you can test these while it's still attached to the vehicle. As you can see, you have a harness connector right there. What I'm going to do is remove it, place it on the bench, just so it's easier for me to film, it, the lighting is better, so on and so forth. But by all means, you can test these while they're still attached to the vehicle. Now to remove this, I'm going to use a socket that's made specifically for removing air fuel sensors. Sometimes they're just called oxygen sensor removal sockets. Now in this 2006 Acura, I have a strut bar that runs from the passenger side all the way over to the driver's side. And the problem I'm having is I can fit my hand past the bar and the firewall, but I'm sort of stuck and I can't reach the sensor. So what I'm going to do is remove this bar as well. Every car is different. Sometimes you come across things like this. Not a big deal. There's a couple points here on uh, both ends and it just pops right out. But sometimes you just have to clean up everything up so you, you can get better access. Now before I begin, what I'm going to do is just spray these down with PB Blaster. You can also use WD-40. And that's just to prevent them from breaking off. And in this case, these are just 12, 12 millimeter fasteners. Now take a look at the working room that we have. Sometimes taking that 10 minutes makes all the difference. So now, let me just let the camera focus here. Now we have clear access to the sensor and follow the wiring to the harness connector. Obviously we need to, to remove this 
Now it's attached to a metal bracket. A little hard to see, but right where my thumb is, there's, there's a, uh, a tab. And if I push it toward the front of the vehicle, I can remove this. I know the camera for some reason is having a tough time here. There we go. So move, you see the tab? There we go. So all that I did is I'm pressing this tab forward and pulling. Then right here is the connection. Press that down and just pull. Don't pull from the wiring, pull from the body and we'll remove this from the vehicle. Okay, so press on the tab. And there you go. Now, if you're not familiar with these, this is an air fuel or an oxygen sensor removal socket. Now, they typically accept either half inch or three h drives. In this case, I'm using a half inch adapter to a half inch whoops there we go ratchet so essentially this is your setup and then you just loosen up and remove the air fuel sensor now in some vehicles you may not even need this socket it certainly makes the job easier but sometimes you may be able to get away without using the socket but again on a tight fit vehicle like this it makes all the difference so I have my extension attached to the socket down there as you can see, place my ratchet, tight fit again, that's just the way it is on these newer vehicles, but if you're patient enough, take your time, you'll be fine. Okay. And once you have it loose, you just slowly back it out. Now, one thing to note, if you have trouble code 2195, most likely this is just loose from the exhaust. So just make sure it's tight, and that's probably your problem. So, again, that's if you have trouble code 2195. And there is your air fuel sensor. Now, like I was stating earlier, there are two ways you can test this sensor. The first technique is sort of old-fashioned, but it works very, very well, and it's easy enough. And that's using a digital multimeter. They're inexpensive. This one is $20 off Amazon. You can do a number of different tests on your vehicle. Also, uh, for really any electronic uh, appliance inside your house, multiple uses. But in this case, we need to perform a resistance or an ohms test and that's the omega symbol so you just choose the omega symbol on your multimeter and the meter let me get everything in one frame here the meter has two leads a red lead and a black lead all that we're doing we're taking the leads and on the opposite end we have the harness connector with a number of different prongs we're just grabbing this these two connectors and touching the prongs and we should see a reading now an average reading for a good sensor is two to four ohms at room temperature. Now here it's maybe 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So the colder it is when you do this test, the higher the number will be. The hotter it is, the lower the number will be. So we probably will see something like six ohms. That, that's my guess. Now how do I know which two prongs to touch? Because look, the multimeter only has two leads. That's it. So how do you know? Well. You can really just trial and error. Now, I'm using alligator clips. You don't have to use these. This just makes the job a lot easier because it, imagine if you're trying to hold one here, very, very thin as you can see these prongs and trying to touch another lead. It's very, very difficult. So I like these alligator clips. It makes the job so much easier. So one end, <clears throat> excuse me, one end is touching the prong. The other one is going to the lead. And I'll show you on how you can really just trial and error this. Uh, where's my other alligator clip? Okay, second one goes to number two. That's this guy right here. And we should see a reading. Just watch the multimeter. Here we go. So five and a half, 5.4 ohms. So this sensor is working perfectly fine. And in fact, I'm just doing this as a how-to. So that being said, this is what you want to do. But let's say you, you've removed the sensor, you have a multimeter, and you don't know which two prongs to touch. Just trial and error it. So for example, if 
I try this guy over here, no reading. Try it over here, no reading. So you could just test the sensor like so. The best thing you could do is again, use the internet to its full advantage. A lot of times you could dig up diagrams showing which prongs to touch, forums, Google images, or again, just purchase the repair manual for your vehicle. But that's all it takes. It's that simple to test these sensors. Now, if you do this test and you, you do not get a reading, sometimes you may get a reading that's incredibly high, but typically you just won't see a reading here. The sensor's bad, it needs to be replaced. It's important you do this because you may have a good sensor but have something else going on. Now before I reinstall the sensor, I'm going to use some anti-seize compound. If you do replace the sensor, you'll notice that they'll include a small plastic cap around the threads. And then when you remove the cap, you'll see this material, which is anti-seize compound. So in this case, because we're reusing the sensor, let's put just a touch on here. You don't want to apply this on the sensor itself that's taking the reading, just on the threads. Now typically if these do go bad, they can last for a very, very long time. Um, many of you probably remember, if you're familiar with this channel, we had a Nissan Maxima, 97 Maxima. I don't think that ever once threw a code for an oxygen sensor or an air fuel sensor. So they can last for, for a very, very long time. The key thing is these will clog up if your vehicle is, is burning coolant or oil they'll clog up and then you know you have to replace them but they can be really expensive so it's important just to check and verify if it's working correctly now when you reinstall the sensor make sure everything is nice and straight in this case in other words if I tighten this at an angle it will strip the threads so just make sure you have this right and we'll tighten this down now you don't need to over tighten these again you don't want to strip the threads but just make sure it's nice and tight Maybe a little bit more and there you go. And then go ahead, reconnect the harness connector. If you have any silicone grease, just go ahead and spray a little bit in there. It's inert, it won't hurt it. And then just place this back on the tab. And then let me show you one other thing you can also check. So I've placed everything back together. I also cleaned off the panels, any dirt and grime, things like that. This is good stuff, by the way, if you ever need to clean uh, your engine or just stuff in the garage does a very good job. But that being said, let's say you tested that sensor and it's working perfectly fine, but you do have the check engine light on. What else can you check? Now, most modern vehicles have at least two fuse boxes, one underneath the hood the other inside the cabin. Now what you want to look for is the fuse for the air fuel sensors. Let's take a look at the opposite end number four. That is the fuse for the air fuel sensors. Now chances are if you have a check engine light for the sensor it's most likely the sensor. Uh, these uh, other options are pretty remote in terms of the wiring not being good, the fuse is being blown, uh, this is a good thing to check if uh, if the vehicle was in a flood, in a collision, you, you just purchased the vehicle, then you check these things. But ultimately, take a look at the fuse. If the arc is broken, you found the problem. But again, chances are it's just the sensor. Now lastly, let's start the vehicle and verify everything's working correctly. Now the last step is just verifying that the sensor is working correctly. You can also use this technique to test the sensor. By far the fastest way to test the sensor, but you do need a scan tool that can read live data. This is the most inexpensive one I've been able to find off Amazon. It's $40. Again, I'll include a link in the description box below if you do need one of these. But that being said, what live data means is that the vehicle is running and now we need to pull specific information from the vehicle's computer. If you're not familiar with these, you essentially just plug them in. You plug the scan tool right into the vehicle's computer and you're ready to rock and roll. So let's just go right into the system. Now what we want to find is that specific sensor, the one located at sensor, I'm sorry, bank one, sensor one. Okay, so this may say oxygen sensor instead of air fuel sensor, doesn't matter. You want to find that sensor for bank one sensor one. Okay, so data stream, 
we want to select, we, we want to find that specific sensor. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, you can do a lot of things with these, uh, with these scan tools. Okay, oxygen sensor, bank one sensor two, that's after the cat, we don't want that. Bank one sensor two, bank two sensor two, bank two sensor two. That would work, here we go, right here. So you see oxygen sensor current, bank one sensor one, that's it. So let's hit yes. And as you see, I have a reading. So this is a milliamp reading. Uh, the vehicle's computer is currently getting from that specific sensor and that verifies that it's working. So that's all it takes really to test, replace and verify what's going on with the air fuel sensor. I hope this helps a number of you out there. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.